Is an external clock on a DAC important? This highly technical question comes from Ricardo in Portugal. He writes, in one of your last Ask Paul videos, you briefly talked about having an external clock connected to a source, let's say a CD transport, mm, probably more likely a, a, a DAC, but that's all right. I recently bought a second-hand external Weiss 202 DAC, 202 DAC from Daniel Weiss Company. Good stuff, actually. Uh, and I was wondering if it really benefits from an external clock. I asked Daniel via email, and he told me that in his opinion, there are no major benefits of having this solution. Like almost all things in audio, there are people who really say that having an external clock is a big deal, and others that just don't see a real benefit. What are your personal thoughts about this particular subject? Well, uh, I agree with Daniel that a properly designed DAC is likely not going to benefit much from an external DAC unless there are noise issues from that internal DAC. So we, we've talked briefly about this before, and I'll, I'll go through it again. One of the things that our digital guru, Ted Smith, who designs all of our direct stream DAC products, has uh, hammered into my head as he, look, he's, I know, I know stuff, right? But I am no expert like Ted. But the idea is that long-term stability of a clock is not very important to audio while short-term stability is. So let me explain what that means. And, and first, let's start with what is the clock inside of a DAC or a, or a CD transport. So the clock is the, the conductor, the, the guy who's keeping tempo, if you will. So in digital audio, if we just take PCM and we ignore DSD for a moment, in PCM, we use bits collected into groups which are known as words. So a 16-bit system, like you find in a CD, that's the length of the word. So it takes 16 bits to create one word, and that word describes a voltage level uh, in, in, in audio terms, right? So if we imagine that our audio signal is going up and down, up and down in voltage, louder and softer, louder and softer. And I, I don't mean in terms of the overall loudness and softness, but in terms of building, well, imagine a sine wave, right? So just, just if we were just to do a sine wave, thousand cycle sine wave, you can imagine this little S on its side that is just moving right along at a certain height. And that height, that overall height, the level of voltage is the loudness. Now to make up that loudness voltage, we put we break that sine wave into little tiny steps. And those little tiny steps are uh, constructed by individual words, these digital words made up of 16 bits. And those bits allow us to describe with fairly fine detail what those individual steps, a high step, a low step, uh, a middle step, and, and, and so each step is collected along the way, and all of that is kept track by a clock. So if we have 16,400 words in a one second time period, so you've, you've heard the term 1644, so if, if we have, well, let, let's put it a different way, so I'm, I'm mixing up metaphors here, sorry. I, Look, I get off on these tangents and I, as I'm trying to, on the fly in a riff, lower, um, uh, reduce technical stuff down to something very simple, I do, I, I get screwed up. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> what do you want out of me? 1644, so there's 16 bits in each of the words that make up this little, this little chunk and 44,000 times a second, or 
half that because that 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 describes a uh, a stereo. No, no, no. It, it it's true. Okay, get the brain back in order here. In order to satisfy the Nyquist requirement, we have to have double the the highest frequency we're going to have, which is uh, we're going to cut it off at 22k. So uh, the Nyquist uh, formula suggests that we have to have twice that or 44,000 times a second. So, all right, back on track. Sorry. I know everybody's freaking out. It's going to say it wrong. <laughs> I say it wrong all the time. So, 44,000 times per second, we have one of these 16 bit words that come out. And uh, if you just slice that up, think of it like a train, you know, that has 44,000 cars that pass by in one second, and, and some cars are filled, and those are the bits, and some cars aren't filled, those are, you know, lower bits, if you will. Um, that's how a word is constructed, and what keeps track of all of that is the clock. So the clock says word, 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 there's a, a word clock and a bit clock. So a bit clock is you know, how many times am I going to, do I have this 16-bit word, uh, the, the 16 bits within a word, how many times am I clocking those bits, how many times am I clocking those words, et cetera, et cetera, right? So without getting too technical, and <laughs> to try and keep it all straight for you, <clears throat> the clock, the master clock, is what's keeping tempo or track of all of this stuff. So its accuracy is actually really critical. It, it, it's, it's very critical. We have, uh, we've talked about this before, jitter, which is if the clock is moving in time and it's not keeping very good time, um, that can cause all kinds of problems that we hear. And we expect a certain level of accuracy in order for the systems to even work, right? But the question comes down to, are internal clocks good enough well, a lot of it depends on how you design that clock. In our DACs, in our systems, we use extremely low jitter fixed clocks. Well, they're variable, but so Ted uses, oh, like seconds to vary them. You know, if they're going to drift at all and he wants them to catch up or slow down, they move extremely slowly, one or two seconds. And we can't hear those changes, right? And that's the point. If you have an external clock that you've probably seen them oven controlled, they are, oh my God, they're, they're accurate to within two million years with femtosecond accuracy. We can't hear that, that we're not gonna live for eternity. We're not gonna be around. When you're listening to my voice, it's in real time. So we don't care about the long-term accuracy of a clock. What we do care about is its low jitter characteristics its low noise and effect on the power supply, uh, and all of those things do matter. So, to sum it all back up, an external clock matters or may matter if it's reducing noise inside of a digital system. That's one good reason to have it. Generally, if they're designed properly and they have low jitter, then an external clock is not necessary. So, Wrapping all the way back to Ricardo's question, it really depends on the brand of DAC you're buying. Obviously, Daniel Weiss feels that he's done a good enough job uh, to not require the lower noise of an external clock. And I would tend to agree with that. And I would say the same for us. Other DAC manufacturers, maybe not so much. So you'd have to look into that. All right. Sorry it got so complicated and I got so off track. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, and thank you for the question. I appreciate it.